Hi, I'm Sophie and welcome to my world. You know, I get a lot of requests for room decor and things to hold your jewelry, that kind of stuff. And so I've come up with this really, really cute idea. It is a jewelry keeper that's made out of duct tape, washi tape, and clothespins. And it's really, really fun. And I'm going to show you how to make it right now. So for this project, I'm actually going to be using duct tape and washi tape. I'm going to be using some ribbon. I'm going to be using an X-Acto knife, scissors, a work surface, foam core or cardboard. You want something with a little bit of body. You want something that has a little bit of strength to it. That's why I used foam core. You'll need a ruler and you'll want some clothes pins. These are just simple clothes pins. You can find these at the dollar store. And what we're going to first start doing is cutting our piece of foam core. Now, what I like to do is I like to make my foam core base as long inches wise as the number of clothespins I'm going to be using. So I'm going to be using nine clothespins, which means I'm going to make this nine inches long. So nine clothespins, nine inches long. And then as far as the width, what I want to do is I want to make it basically about the width of the clothespin. In this case, you can see it's a tiny bit shorter, and that's because I wanted to make this a standard width, which is three inches. So in this case, it's nine by three, nine by three. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to cover the foam core. And the way that I like to do this is I actually like to measure my tape to the exact length and width of my foam core. So what I would do here is lay out my piece of tape and use my foam core as the measuring device. So I'm going to lay that down and you see I'm just going to go right to the very edge there. And then what I'm going to do for my width is do the same thing, but I'm going to use my width. And what I'm going to do here is cut two pieces for the width. I'm going to cut two pieces that are exactly the length. And then I'm going to cut a third piece that's actually about an inch longer on each side. So about 11 inches. Now I've cut my pieces here ahead of time just to get me going. But I wanted to show you how to measure those. All right. Now we're going to cover. First thing we do is start with one of our pieces that is an exact width. And we're going to do basically a half on, half off. So I'm going to cover half on, half off so that I can pull this over to the back and secure it on the back like that. Now I'm going to do the same thing with that second piece right on the bottom. Again, that's sort of half on, half off and pull that around to the back. And there we go. Now that longer piece is what's going to go in the center here. So I'm going to take that longer piece, put it right down the center like that, and wrap it around the back, and wrap it around the back, so that it looks like that on the back. Now, take those two shorter pieces, and I'm going to place them on either end and bring them over. This is going to seal the entire piece of foam core and make it nice and neat. Here we go. Now I'm going to add my string. Now the thing about the string is I only need about a foot of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a hole right here on the side. And I can use my scissors. Now I've actually done one side already just to speed up the process here. So what I'm going to do is about a thumbnail in, about three quarters of an inch, 
and about half an inch down, I'm just going to make a hole with my scissors. Now do be very careful that you don't get your finger. So see my finger is out of the way. And make sure that you don't cut yourself with that open scissor. You can also use your X-Acto knife, but again, be very, very careful. Now, take your string, thread it through the hole, and again, you might need to use those scissors just to push it through. Or if you have a paper clip or something like that, you could always use a paper clip. Just push it through, so it comes out the back side. And then, what you want to do is pull it to the length that you like for hanging. I like to keep mine rather short so that there isn't a lot of tipping involved. So I'm going to pull it to about there, leaving mm, about an inch and a half, two inches for my arch. And now I'm just going to tie this off with a knot. And I'm just going to use a double knot. I'm going to tie it once and tie it twice. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is slide that knot to the back. And the extra thread I'm going to pull down. I'm going to cut this pretty close. And now I'm going to take a tiny piece of tape. And I'm going to secure this back. Just like that. So now it looks kind of like a little nameplate or a door plate. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my beautiful clips ready. So I've got my washi tape here. And I actually have done a whole bunch of these ahead of time, but I do want to show you how to cover these nicely. So what I found works best is if you take your work surface and open up your tape and make sure that you have a nice clean cut. It's nice when you have these stripes here because you can just follow along there. If you had a different pattern, it wouldn't matter. Just make sure you have a nice clean cut. Then what you're going to do is lay it right at the very end, right along the end of your clothespin. Now here's the thing. You want to center the clothespin in the middle of the tape so that you've got a little on this side and a little on that side. Now I'm going to flip this over here. Using my X-Acto knife, I'm going to cut that tape. And now I just fold those edges down. And I get a beautiful covering like that. So like I said, I've done a bunch of mine ahead of time. And I'm going to do two different patterns just for fun. What we're going to do now is actually lay out our clips. And I'm going to start with these guys on either end. Now I'm going to create a pattern with my washi tape, which will be fun. So I'm going to take this silver tape here, this silvery tape, which I think is very pretty. And I'm going to go up and over to the edge here. Now see how I have that little bit of extra overhang there? I'm going to leave that little bit of extra overhang but I am going to snip up at the top here to make sure that I have a nice, even ending. I'm going to come back and actually put a piece of border tape here so I'm not worried about this being a little bit more jagged up here. So I'm going to do this on either side. Like that. And like that. Wrap that there. And if you want to, you can use your X-Acto knife here too get a nice clean cut. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the remainder of my clips out. And why I'm going to do this is so that I make sure that I get nice even spacing. One of the things that I learned as I was working with these is that, I'm going to change my pattern up here a little bit, is that sometimes the, the clothes pins actually are different sizes in the, in the package, which is a little crazy, I know. But some are a little skinnier, some are a little fatter. And so you, you end up with a little bit of give and take that you have to give yourself. OK. 
Okay, so I switched that pattern up there a little bit. And next I'm gonna put these guys on either side like that. And I'm gonna go back to the silver. There we go, silver. And cut. So I haven't glued these down, and there's a reason I haven't glued them down. I know it seems like they're a little awkward because they're bouncing around and doing that kind of stuff, but I haven't glued them down yet because I just want to make sure that they're all correct and set before I secure them into place. Okay, so now we got these guys. See, and if you work from the outside in, you give yourself a little bit of wiggle room because if they're too close, you can always overlap your tape here. And if they're too far apart, you can always bring your tape in. So you get yourself a little bit of wiggle room. So see, now I got a little bit of wiggle room to put my middle one in there in the center. And now I'm gonna take these guys off because I don't need them and I'm just gonna tuck this down, this down, this down, this down, this down, this down, and these guys down. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is come back and give myself a beautiful edge. And I'm gonna make sure that I overlap a little bit in the back and overlap a little bit on the back here. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. Now I've got my piece done here. It's all the same, you can see how that is. Right, just like that. Put that final piece down. Cut that. Okay, now all that's left is to glue these guys on. Now here's the thing. I want to give myself a little bit of space up above here where I could put rings, where I could put keys, where I could put whatever I want. So what I'm gonna use as my topper to line up with the top here is this hinge right here. Now, I'm gonna be using my glue gun for this because you know my glue gun is gonna give me a fast, quick glue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put glue on the bottom right up to that hinge. And I'm just, like I said, gonna start from the outsides and work my way in. And I'm just gonna use that hinge as my guideline for where to put my glue and how to line these guys up. And hopefully, they should line up beautifully because we've already done this with our tape. And so we've got exactly where they're supposed to go. The last one should be that middle one. And that should do it for my hanger. And there you have it, your clothespin keeper. Now, what I really love about this is you can use it for your jewelry, or if you want to, you could put a note to remind yourself what you have to take to school the next day. You could put your lunch money. You could put any number of things. Maybe your car keys could go on here. It depends on where you hang it, how you want to use it. It's all up to you. What I love about it is it's open-ended and you can use it any way you want. And it's really, really simple to hang anywhere. For more great ideas with recycled materials, come and check us out at sophie-world.com.